Thank you, Judge. <coughs> How often did Mr. Wade visit you at a place where you were living between 2019 and 2021? So you want to start with the lie that he lived with me in, in South Fulton in 2019, a home he's never been to? That's one lie you told Judge, in your document. I, no, you, Judge, I didn't ask her about that. Miss um, Merchant, I want you to ask a very precise question. I think she's saying and answering that he did not live with her. So why don't we break that up into smaller yeah. parts? And I, I, I didn't ask about living. But you put in your, did while you, we're talking about professionalism, no, while we're talking about professionalism, she put in three different documents he lived with me. Full opportunity to respond. In and filed that with the court. In 2019. He's never been to South Fulton. In 2019, I lived in South Fulton. He has never been to my residence in 2019, ever, not once. In 2019, he's never been to your residence, any place. I lived in my home in South Fulton before I started getting the threats that were here, a house I paid for with my own sweat and tears. I'm no longer able to live there. But in 2019, I did. And in the two months of 2019 that I knew Mr. Wade, three months, the beginning of October, all of November, and all of December, Mr. Wade never came to my house in South Fulton. Let me help you out. I lived there in 2020. He never came to my house in 2020, let alone live with me, as you put falsely in these documents. In the first three months of 2021, when I could still enjoy my home, Mr. Wade never came to South Fulton, and it is certainly a lie that he lived with me. So in 2020, let's, so you said 2019, 2020, did Mr. Wade ever visit you at a place that you He has in? never been to my home in South Fulton. 2020 was before I knew that a phone call was gonna be made and I was gonna have to abandon my home. As a result thereof, he never visited, lived at, came to, or has seen South Fulton. You qualified that with your home in South Fulton. I'm That's asking, where I lived in 2020. In 2020, did he ever visit you at a place that you resided? Okay. I don't understand. You must be the guy. In 2020, so I lived in South Fulton. Okay. That's the only place I lived in South Fulton. That's before I had to abandon my home, Judge. All right. And at my well, home in South Fulton, we'll this, I never, he never came there, okay? So if you don't Ms. come someplace, you can't live there. Ms. Wells, that's, I'm going to have to caution you. That's, that's going to be my the first time I have to caution you. We have to listen to the questions as asked. And if this happens again and again, I'm going to have no choice but to strike your testimony. So we need to break this down. Mr. Merchant's question, I believe, was uh, asking whether you lived anywhere other than South Fulton. I did not live anywhere but South Fulton, Georgia, in 2020. That is before I began my prosecution of this case, and I, it was my plan to only live there. Did Mr. Wade ever visit you at the condo that you leased from Ms. Yerdy? He visited that condo, yes. He did? Yes. Did he ever spend the night at that condo? No. Just visited? Yeah, but he did visit for sure. Did you ever go out to eat together, other than the lunches you talked about, during 2019 or 2020? I would think that we probably went to lunch, but it wouldn't have been, let me think, 2019. I'm going to say, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to say we probably broke bread someplace in 2019. I, I don't remember it, but it seems like we would have broke bread sometime in 2019. So I'm going to say yes, although I have no recollection. Um, but it seems to me like I, got, I go out to eat and drink with pretty much everyone, so I'm going to say yes. So outside of the vacations that we've already talked about, did you ever go out to dinner with Mr. Wade? I, I mentioned to you that I I'm going to object as to what time period. Like we're, we're asking very vague questions. I thought we were treating the witness as hostile under 611. We're no longer doing that. So. Are we going to go back and forth? We need to be more specific with our questions if we're going to treat her as hostile. All right, Ms. Merchant, it's not so much. I think you can elect between leading and open-ended questions, but I think we are still wondering about, and I think we need to get back on track of focusing on the financial benefit or the relationship. And my next question about if you did go out to dinner, who paid when you went out to dinner? You paid. I paid. You both paid. I, okay, so let me be real clear. 
We didn't say, oh, the bill is $102. You give $51, I'll give $51. I don't operate like that with my girlfriends. I don't operate like that with anyone. He caught the bill, I caught the bill. Whomever. Did you ever pay him through Cash App? No. You only ever paid him through cash? What? Yes, uh, but we're talking about, I'm very confused. You've never like, given Mr. Wade money through Cash App? No. The only money you've ever given him outside of a contract is cash. I didn't give him money in a contract, so that was cute, but I didn't give him money outside, uh, in a contract. What happened is, no, we're going to answer it since you said it. He worked. He worked more hours than he was paid, and the county paid him for the work that he did. So don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. And I will ask you about the contract in a minute. I asked you about cash. Did you ever pay him anything? And I'm trying to qualify my questions. I'm not talking about the contract at Fulton County that, that was paid. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about outside of that, did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given him cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you've if never we would go to dinner. Let, let her finish her answer. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Okay. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is $2,500. The least amount of money I've handed him, probably between $500 and $1,000. You never wrote him a check? Ma'am, I don't have checks. Okay. Um, so you have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question was, do you have I'm any proof? Is that what you're intimating right here? I'm asking if you have any proof that you paid him any I mean, of these The proof is what I just told you. You have no written proof. Is that correct? So I have some... Um, probably some transactions like in Belize. I probably spent $500 on my card uh, in Belize. I spent 800, I can't remember, 900 bucks on each of our tickets to go to Belize. I did the $700. I probably got some <coughs> minor expenses in Aruba that would be on a card. But for the most part for those trips, other than, so the two cruises, I gave him money for those before we ever left. Um, Cause they were pre -booked. let me answer. Well, the, the question was if you had any written proof, and so... So I've answered you that I've had and, written and we proof. we can move to the next question, if you've answered if you had any written proof, and that was my question. Um, I, I want to make sure that we're clear that for the two cruises... Judge, I asked if she gave him written proof. We're not going to talk over each other. Ms. Merchant, she answered your question, so we can ask the next question. Ms. Willis and Ms. Cross will have plenty of opportunities to let you clarify your answers when it's her turn. Thank you, Judge. Knowing your role as district attorney, you know that public funds are scrutinized and money is scrutinized and things like that. You understand. No, I'm, never, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You understand. You're under a microscope. You have reporting requirements. All of those types of things. Um, you have no record other than your testimony of the money that you've given Mr. Wade. You've already asked that question. Let's keep going. Um, when you took office, you had a tax lien of forty-six hundred dollars. Did you pay that with cash when you <clears throat> made that tax lien hole? I probably paid through uh, <coughs> however you pay. Okay. So, but you were saying that you had amounts of cash. You still had that lien in 2022 when you were getting weighed and going on these trips. So, the cash that you gave him, that could have been used to pay this tax lien off? you going to tell me how to pay my bills? This is not relevant as it relates to why we're here today. Ms. Merchant, um, if you are you trying to establish that she was insolvent in some way? Um, I definitely was trying to establish that, that she did not have these mass amounts of cash that she's talking about, yes. All right, ask the, re -ask the question. Um, you had a tax lien in 2022, $4,600. If you say I did. And you did not use this cash that you had to reimburse Mr. Wade to pay that off, correct? No, Okay. I went shopping too and I didn't pay it off. And you talked about, uh, you, you, gave a, you gave a lot of interviews to some authors of a book called Finding the Books, right? I would not characterize it as a lot. I probably have spoken to them you know, two or three times. My question is relevant as to I, I think it's already come up. Right. That finances are discussed in the book. I'll overrule that. Thank you. Ms. Wilson, you can continue your answer. Well, it came up with Mr. Wade as it relates to hearsay statements that he was asked about in relation to what Ms. Willis may or may not have said in relation to an author. So it's not relevant to the testimony that's occurring 
I think Ms. Merchant has said that it, inside the book, she also makes a statement as to her own finances, and that's that issue. So you gave interviews to the authors of this book, correct? Once or twice. Okay. And so three times, um, just to be comprehensive, I don't know if it was three times, two or three times, I think. You were quoted in the book, and I will give you a chance to say if this is a misquote. You were quoted, I really, when they asked you about if you wanted to run for office for DA, you were quoted, I really don't want to be financially effed up again. Do you remember saying that? So what that refers to, so that- My question there. first is if you remember saying that. I remember saying something similar to that, but I would like to be able to explain what that's, that's in fine. reference to. That's not um, in reference to anything else. It was a huge sacrifice to be district attorney in Fulton County, huge. I was doing just fine. I had a municipal court judgeship that was paying me a hundred something thousand dollars a year and like you got to show up twice a week. It, easiest thing I've ever done in life. I also had private clients that were um, paying me to represent them. So I was able to have a law practice and that. Um, raising two daughters by myself, there were times in life where things were hard. And so I was telling people, I don't really run for DA. I don't want to run for DA. I'm in a good position right now. I got this easy job that I enjoy being the chief judge of the city of South Fulton. I'm making money at uh, the law firm. And I'm not sure that I want to make this sacrifice. And why does it always have to be me? Um, eventually, I prayed. I think that I was the appropriate person. I think that I did that. So when you're referring to that, what I'm saying is, I, why should I make a sacrifice again? And what I was not talking about is being district attorney. Once you get elected district attorney, you're, you're in a fine financial position. I make over $200,000 a year. What I was talking about is I ran for judge. When I ran for judge, I took $50,000 of my personal money out of my retirement. And that money ended up being lost. And I know when you bet on yourself, you're going to have to bet money on yourself. And so what I was talking about was not wanting to go through the personal financial expense of running for office. By no means did I think that I was going to uh, be financially in a bad position once I won. Let's talk about what I was up against because it's important to understand that comment. I had a district attorney who had been here for 24 years. And Judge, People, no, 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 this is it's very relevant questions. as to what my mindset was about this. So I'm trying to answer your question. So what I was saying is I... Taylor, so it's a finance. Right, but it, it is about my finances. If I, I didn't, nobody put me in this seat. So I had already run for office once. I had spent $50,000 of my own money running. And it was vamoose, nothing. And so when I'm talking to those offers, I'm talking about the contemplation of the sacrifice of the run not the sacrifice of once you become DA. The odds were against me. I was likely going to lose uh, the election based on who I was running against. So that needs to be in the, the appropriate context. Isn't it true that the authors also wrote, and you can dispute this if, if you'd like, um, that you were broke after that race? The 2018 race? Yes. Yeah, that was, that was a hard race. I wasn't broke like I didn't have any. So broke is relative to depending where you are, but that hurt to lose that $50,000. So I'm sure my mental mindset was like, I just gave $50,000 away. Right. So they characterized it from their conversations with you that you were broke. You had poured your own money into the campaign and you weren't able to pay your own bills because of your, oh, I'm sorry, your clients couldn't pay their bills to you and you had a paltry array of family and asset forfeiture cases. It says you were trying to make it month to month. Um, is that an accurate depiction of your financial situation at that point? I would want to read that, but I, I don't. I don't remember clients not being able to pay their bills. Or may I approach the You can. You may. Page thirteen. I have not read this book. So like this fact here, her ex-husband Fred had run into a financial, I have no information about that. I didn't that. ask you about that. Okay. I just asked about if you were, if what they represent from their interviews with you, that you were broke and that you had clients that weren't able to, to pay their bills. Can you show me where that is? Because this is where you put the tab, so that's where I read. Broke, put it, pay their bills. Yeah, that, that uh, I'm sure I characterize myself as broke as leaving that $50,000. I don't know that I had a... Uh, her nascent law practice at Paltry Rev. Well, I didn't have. Ms. I, I didn't. I, test, I thought I had a law practice. I, 
so this is not correct. I'm okay. sure it's just, I, I, I didn't have any asset forfeiture cases. So I had one case where uh, they had took one of my clients money at the airport. That's, I don't know if that's what they're carrying. I don't know. Um, paltry array, I did have family law cases. I guess that's what they're talking about. And I, clients who couldn't pay their bills ain't clients, so no. So my question was just if this was a fair and accurate representation where it says you were trying to make it month to month at that point. No, I don't think that that is actually a fair and accurate representation, okay. but I am certain that after the 2018 election, um, I'm still not really happy about having given up that 50000 you know when you paid your tax lien? I don't. You don't? Do you know if you paid it? I know I've paid some taxes. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Um, did you tell anyone at Fulton County Board of County Commissioners about your relationship with Mr. Wade? No. Did you disclose your relationship to anybody at Fulton County? No, I don't think so. Um, and as the Chief Law Enforcement Officer of Fulton County, I assume that you're familiar with the County Code and warden Ordinances? I'm saying we're not going to cover that in this hearing, Ms. Merchan. Um, I'm sorry, Judge? We, I th we said we weren't going to cover the uh, county regulations. Okay, and I, I, I won't. Um, let me ask you this then. So are you aware that you're required to disclose any relationship with someone that you contract with in Fulton County? I'm going to object to the court fire ruling that you made this morning. But would this be Monday. different because it's a potential for impeachment? Yes. What did you ask me? I'm so, um, Ms. Merchant, if you could re-ask the question. Okay. Um, <coughs> are you aware that Fulton County requires you to disclose any relationship with someone that you're doing business with? I'm not aware, and I'm, I know often that time things are confused with state constitutional officers in county, but I'm not aware. Okay. So it's not your, so it's your understanding that you don't have a duty to disclose the relationship. She's answered that question. Let's keep going. Um, Did you keep track of this cash that you paid him at all? What are you talking? I don't understand. Did you keep track? Did you keep a ledger? Did you keep track of it? So I've only given him cash, as I mentioned, three or four times. There's no ledger. This is friends handing money off to each other. So the answer is no. And I think, and I think you've already asked whether there was any written proof whatsoever. And she's yes. answered that. Okay. So we've covered this. Let's move on. Um, referring to when you suggested that Mr. Roman's motion to disqualify was racially motivated. We already said we're not talking about the forensic misconduct that's been alleged. Okay. And okay. And just so the record is clear, I don't believe I said that his motion was racially motivated, so I don't want that to stay there. I've never said his motion was racially motivated, so that that should not be true. I think it would be that. best if we don't need to go down that road. Uh, we're going to save that for argument. Um, you once said that you would not engage with a personal relationship with anyone that worked for Fulton County, is that correct? Uh, an employee? Anyone that worked for Fulton County. I think I said an employee. Okay. So that's the qualification you give an employee? You would not I think that's the statement that I made, so if you want to quote me, quote me accurately. So it's your position because Mr. Wade was not an employee? Or it's your position he wasn't an employee, correct? Mr. Wade is not an employee, and he will tell you that over and over again. statement just so I make sure I accurately quote you what you said was you won't work you won't sleep with people who work under you do you not consider mr. Wade working under you I consider mr. Wade to be an agent Agent. Yeah. All right. and appointee is what I really re re think of him as your point whatever Meredith has uh, miss merchant is on the record Thank you, next question all right okay. do we need any moments in, in a minute mr. say down no I'm ready to go your honor all right I'm going to try to ask you questions that you can actually answer without having to explain, okay? Yes, sir. My comprehension skills are pretty good, so we should do all right. We shall soon see. If I heard you correctly, you moved into what I will refer to as the Yurti condo 
in either March or April of 2021. Is that correct? Sometime between late February and April. Yes, I don't. Just so we're clear. Yes, but in that time period, you're you're in the ballpark. We're in the ballpark. Okay. And is that Yerti condo? Would you say that it is in Hapeville? It is in Hapeville. Yes, sir. And you moved in there for safety reasons. My father. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I moved in there. My, we were concerned. My father was terribly concerned about me continuing to live at the house. And it, so they were clear, people came to my house at 5 o'clock in the morning um, about the police brutality cases, saying I was going to have a wake-up call. Uh, there were security threats due to gang cases. And there were concerns due to the, um, that was at the very beginning of this, looking into that. And so for all of those reasons and what was happening, my father wanted me out the house. And um, begrudgingly, I left. Okay, so the answer to the question was a yes for safety reasons, correct? Those were all of the things that caused the safety concerns. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm not questioning whether they are or are not safety concerns. I just asked that you moved into this condo, the RT condo, right. for safety reasons, right? Yes. Okay. At the time that you moved into the condo, be it from February to April of 2021, Yes. Was your father still living in your house? Right, because my father... I, that's yeah. all I ask you. But I, I get to explain the answer, sir. I, I don't know if there's an explanation. If I ask you, was your father still living at your house, the answer is either he was or he wasn't. Yes, but you are going to get to argue at the end of this, as we both I'm know. I'm not going to argue so anything. I'm going to ask... I'm going to explain why. I'm going to... So, okay. yes, okay. because my father is an older Mr. gentleman, Mr. he Mr. was worried about COVID, and he stayed. I, I, I so also going to have to say that's... Second time, whenever we have to put a pause, stop testifying, okay? You'll have a chance to explain yourself. The question was whether your father was not staying there at the time, and you're clarifying that in your answer as well. You can have a brief clarification, but it shouldn't be something that reaches well beyond the question. All right, Mr. Sadow, we can re-ask the question. We'll see where it takes us. Okay, thank you. Was your father still living in your house at the time you moved to what I would refer to as a yearty condo? Yes, sir, he was due to his concerns related to COVID. Okay. The safety concern was that there was potential danger at your house. Is that correct? Yes, my address had been exposed, so yes, there was concerns about potential danger at my house. Okay, so anyone staying at your house in the time period after you went to the Yerti condo was still in danger, correct? Yeah, well, no, no, no. I think you have to, uh, it's your attorney, Ms. Willis. Um, sorry, Mr. Potty, your objection is speculation. Yes. To the question of... Speculation whether someone was still in danger at her condo? I can re I can. Right, just let her answer the question. Or Mr. Sadon wants to rephrase. No, I, I, I'm not I, sure. I was able to understand I've got, it. I've got the objection, and then I have. I'll withdraw the objection. Before. Okay. So, and I don't remember the question, so I can answer it. Well, you, you can now that the objection's been withdrawn. Can you try to answer that question? Yes. Was there still a safety concern I was, for people staying at the house? I, yes, I was very concerned about my father still living at the house. However, if you have dealt with an older gentleman, he was not leaving the house, despite my urging him that I thought he should leave as well. He did not want to leave the house because he was particularly worried at his age about COVID. But that became, a, a, I don't want to say, a, I was not happy with that decision of my father's, but I can't ultimately make him leave and he stayed there too long in my opinion. Okay, thank you. During that period that you left to go to the Yerti condo, yes. did any of your children stay at your house? So I don't, um, I don't think that they were there at that point. Certainly my baby wasn't there. I'm talking about this entire period. We're talking about, if I remember correctly, and you'll correct me, I'm sure, you said that you stayed there at what I would call the Yerti condo until January of 2022, correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm asking you in that period, which would be February to April of 2021, until January of 22, did any of your children stay at your house? And you don't have to yell at me. I'm able to understand. I, so I would ask you to not yell at me. That being said, I don't actually expressly remember, but I can tell you 
since I have left my home, there have been times my oldest daughter came in. But I can't tell you with certainty the time window that you've said, if they did or not. So I don't want to speculate to that. But there was some time that my oldest daughter came back. Whether it was that period or after I left the Yodi residence, I'm not sure, okay? Okay, so the, if, if I continue to go into more detail on this, you're not going to be able to give me an answer of whether or not, in fact, any of your children were still at the house or stayed at your house during that time period, correct? What I can give you clarity of, so that we are clear, is from the time I moved out in February-ish of 2021, um, after I left there, there was a time period that my oldest daughter came back. But if you're asking me, was it in that window or after, I just don't have a recollection of that because, you know, your kids come and they go. And so I don't remember the specific time period, and I apologize for that. Did your children ever stay with you at the Yerti condo? Uh, like maybe a night. Okay. Like for a girl's night or something, but live with, no. Okay. Did anyone else stay with you at the Yerti condo, including Miss Yerti? Never. Miss Yerti never lived in the condo. She met her husband, and they moved. They weren't quite married, but they moved. Nobody ever lived with me in the condo. That was a my a word was period. my word was stayed, not lived. Stayed with you at the condo. I guess I don't understand the distinction, but no one ever. My I think my baby, my oldest child, I think she spent one night with me. Maybe my oldest and my youngest. But I think that whole time I was in that place, other than that one night, I don't think anyone ever, um, this is a very lonely period in my time, like I don't think anyone ever spent the night other than maybe one night. I remember a picture of my baby sitting on the couch in that place and I'm thinking she spent that night. But just a very lonely time in life. Okay, we'll stay with the lonely theme just for a minute. Did Nathan Wade visit you at the Yerti condo from the time you moved in until he was hired on November the 1st of 2021. So I moved out uh, of that condo, but during that time period, he, yeah, I'm sure he came to visit. Uh, he came to visit, I can remember us going, I think the restaurant's Lickety Split, I can remember him picking me up, going to Lickety Split and eating, ordering some food and coming and sitting at my table and eating. So I remember times that he visited me at that condo, yes. Okay, could you give us an approximation of how many times Mr. Wade visited you at the condo between the time you moved in and prior to November 1 of 2020? I don't think often, but I don't, rem I don't want to speculate. Can we say more than five, more than ten? I'm going to tell you the problem I'm having here. Let's say more than 10, but I'm not sure that that's even accurate. Uh, he certainly has come and picked me up, gone and grabbed some food to eat. Uh, I don't remember him being in that condo a lot. Okay, that's your I, I don't, I'm sorry. You want a number and what no, I don't want to do. You're giving me your, your current best and best recollection is all I'm asking for. That's all I can give you, sir. How many times did any of the prosecution team, how, long, how many times did Anna Cross come to that condo between the time you moved in and November 1st of 2021? I don't think Anna's ever been to that condo. What about any other prosecutor that's involved in the prosecution of this case? I don't think any of them have. Just Mr. Wade? That's correct, sir. <clears throat> but it was a lonely time. Oh my God, that, yeah, that 2021, uh, I have a lot of guilt about this time period in my life. Let me tell you why, but it, yes, it was a lonely time. Okay. I was very appreciative to the citizens for giving me this responsibility and this duty. But what I very, very quickly learned is that this is a very isolating job and 2021 was a lonely time. I turned 50 in 2021. That's probably one of the worst birthdays I've ever had. I, I spent it alone. So I have a clear recollection of 2021 being lonely. Okay. Did Mr. Wade ever um, visit you at the condo, the time period I'm talking about, prior to November of 2021, when Ms. Yerty was at the condo? So Ms. Yerty and me, were, we didn't share the condo at the same time. So the answer would be no. 
but we never stayed there together, so it's an oh, impossibility. Okay. It's an impossibility. Yeah. Okay. Now, Miss, so that Miss Yerdy, because we need to get clarification on this. Miss Yerdy stayed in that place. There may have been a time that me and Mr. Wade visited, like went and saw Miss Yerdy, but me and Miss Yerdy never lived there together. Just so we're clear. Well, maybe that was clear, but I'm going to have to try again. Okay. Was Miss Yearty still living in the condo when you moved in? Not a day. Okay. So when I'm talking like misrepresentation in this, we never lived together. I, I never lived with Miss Yearty. My question, though, I'm trying to understand okay. that after you moved in to the condo, Miss Yearty had been she was out of the condo, right? She got a house. Uh, That's all I'm asking. She's not in the condo. She is. We never stay, Miss Yurti and I, never stay a day together in the condo. All of her stuff was out of the condo, and all my stuff, some of my stuff, not all of it, obviously, was moved into the condo. So we never stayed there together. No, sir. All right. So when I ask you about Mr. Wade visiting the condo, yes. when you were staying there, yes. Miss Yurti wasn't staying there, correct? That would be correct, yes. She wouldn't be at the condo, correct? No, she would not have been. It would be you and Mr. Wade alone at the condo, correct? Yes. That is, there weren't any other witnesses to Mr. Wade and you at the condo, correct? Yes. No security, none of your security detail. I object. She said it was just her and Mr. Wade. You made your point, Mr. Sadow. Let's move on to the next one. Yes, sure. Your Honor. Who in the prosecution team prior to, I guess, the motion being filed by um, Defendant Ro Roman, who in the prosecution team knew of your personal relationship, and now I'm talking romantic, with Mr. Wade? So, sir, I am extremely private. All I ask no, no, is no, who no. knew? It's not, a, if you, the answer is no one knew, that's fine. No. I ask you who knew. You answer Let me just it, tell answer you it and then explain this well. I am very private. When I supervised Mr. Body and Mr. McAfee, they didn't know who I was dating, but I can assure you I was dating somebody. So that I kept something private, that's my private life, is not any mystery to anyone. It, it's, it, it's, it's like a, a woman doesn't have the right to keep her private life private. And I'm speaking on this because there have been all these, in, Intimations. You still haven't answered the question, Ms. Willis. I'm sorry, what was the question then, Your Honor? Is there anyone else who knew about it? And then you can explain. I, I don't know. I don't think so. I certainly didn't um, go out telling my business to the world. Okay, so, the best of your recollection, you didn't inform anyone on the prosecution team that the individual that you had chosen to lead the prosecution team had a personal relationship with you. So I is that correct? That's inaccurate. Your, your question is inaccurate. What? Because you, you stated that the person I chose, we had a personal relationship. So we had a friendship. We have, to, we have all these distinguishing factors. Remember, when I chose him in November of 21, first of all, let's get this straight. Mr. Wade was not actually my first choice. That's no insult to him. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I is, you, because of the way you phrased the question, you said, when I chose him, I didn't inform people of a personal relationship. We have defined personal as romantic. It is an inaccurate way to state the question. And I will certainly restate it so it is very accurate. Okay, and please do not yell at me. You hired Mr. Wade for the first time on November 1st of 2021, correct? November of 2021, yes, okay. sir. Your testimony is whether one accepts it or not, your testimony is that at the time you hired Mr. Wade, there had never been a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade before you hired him, correct? Yes, my testimony is that we were very good friends, but not, but we're talking about a sex, so let's just don't... Well, no, I'm not talking about, I'm saying romantic relationship doesn't necessarily have to be just sex. Well, it can I be dating, it can be holding hands, it can be any of those things that one might call romantic. I'm asking you whether or not prior to November 1st of 2021, there was a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade. It's very simple. It's either a yes or a no. I don't consider my relationship with him to be romantic before that. I'm not a hand holder, so no. Yeah, that's fine. Now, let's move beyond November 1st of 2020. Yeah. 2021, excuse me. 
if I understand your testimony, there was no romantic relationship with Mr. Wade until early in 2022, whether it be January or February or March, early in 2022, correct? I would say sometime between February and April. Yes, sir. All right. Now I'm asking you about that time period when it became romantic. Yes, okay? Thank you. Okay. You didn't see the need, if I understand, to tell any of the people on the prosecution team when you had established a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade that the lead prosecutor, that is the, people, the man that was basically giving orders to others, was dating or having a romantic relationship with you, correct? I'm going to object to relevance at this point, Your Honor. This is not relevance. It, just to, to, to prove or attempting to show that there is an issue on the credibility about the relationship. The failure to have informed anyone, anyone on her team that she was having a romantic relationship with the lead prosecutor, I suggest gives rise to that inference. That's the rub of it. The inference that... The inference that, that they were concealing this because it was not as it, it's been characterized to the court, and that, in fact, it started earlier than what they say. All right, overall, let's sit down. I just want to make sure that we're clear from at least 2020, me and Mr. Wade were friends, at least that time period. Okay, I'm not talking okay, about... So no, 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 I just I want to be clear because my credibility is being evaluated here, right? We were friends. We hung out prior to November of 2021. In November of 2021, I hired him. I do not consider our relationship to have become romantic until early of 2022. Because I don't know a date and time, I'm saying sometime between February and April of 2022. And very early April of 2022, because I know that trip that I discussed with you was like the first week of 2022, that the relationship had become romantic. I hope that answered your question. But I can't have it where you know, we're saying something differently. All right, so you've established the timeline, as you put it. The question originally was, uh, at the time, at that time, did you tell any other prosecutors? Uh, prosecutors? I never tell people at work who I'm dating. All right, Mr. Seda. Okay. Did you take any trips to D.C. with Mr. Wade? Never. Did you ever, did you take, okay, so you have no, what I would call personal trips or business trips to D.C. with Mr. Wade? I never went to D.C. with Mr. Wade, personal, business, otherwise, never. Okay, so... I've never been in the District of Columbia with Mr. Wade or Maryland, Virginia, the DMV, as they call it. So as I understand it, just to be clear, any trips that you would have taken to see D.C. That was, a pretty, not, that was a pretty clear answer. Huh? That was a pretty clear answer. No. She just said no. Twice. So you have a variation or something new to bring up? I'll ask you, and we'll see. Did you take trips to D.C. that were non-business during the time period that this case or this matter was under investigation? I'm going to object as to relevance as it relates to the matter that we're here before you on it. Well, again, the, the question already asked was, did you take personal or business trips? She said, but, I, but that was with Mr. Wade. Business. That was with Mr. Wade. This I asked her alone whether she took. Okay. What's the relevance? And what would be the relevance of that? I tried to understand whether or not we, we have an ability to show a personal trip in which Mr. Wade is there at the same time. I understand her answer, okay? I understand her answer, but we have documents. We have records that... You're on, I'm going to the documents, the things that... Well, this could be something that's maybe not part of the record yet, but if he has a... I think there have been other things discussed in this case, and they have evidence that Mr. Wade may have been in D.C. at the same time. If you want to ask about that exact specific date, Mr. Sadon, you can do that. I would I reference to the court that that was not asked of Mr. Wade. Uh, anything about any trips to D.C.? Sure. And so that's going to limit its uh, merit and impact and, on credibility. So, Mr. Sadon, ask the question. So, so there, I understand your testimony is you never took a trip to D.C. with Mr. Wade. That's correct. Personal or business. That's correct. Were you ever in D.C. at the same time as Mr. Wade? I was not. On personal or business? No, me and Mr. Wade have not been to D.C. at the same time. However, 
uh, since Mr. Wade has been on this case, he's been to D.C. Since Mr. Wade has been on to this, this case, I've been to D.C. What has not happened is we have not been in the District of Columbia at the same time. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about with what you asked me is if I've been to D.C. personally, because I've got a lot of personal friends in that area, but I know that I um, have been to D.C. Um, I did an interview at Howard University. I went to D.C. for that. Seems like I've been to D.C. one other time. Oh, I went to D.C. for the Global Summit. Actually, yeah, those were two separate trips. My next question is based on her opening the door, and therefore I'll just ask it in your honor can decide whether or not it's appropriate. When you went to D.C., did you go to the White House? Okay. I did not go to the White House. No, well. Apparently I'm going to get the answer anyhow. There you have it. Next question. Okay. You indicated your best recollection was that your relationship with Mr. Wade, the romantic relationship, uh, ended... Um, you left it in August of 2023. That sound right? That's the hard conversation. That's not the. Uh, We've covered this. Next question. That, and you characterized it as a tough conversation, correct? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to get into the conversation per we se. Should. Well, if he doesn't want to, we won't go there. So, Mr. Sayer, <laughs> next question. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to say no when you've got that opportunity. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, it was it pre-indictment in this case? So we know the timeline that the indictment was delivered. Okay. Well, but, and, and, and so that we're so clear, the okay. physical relationship ended pre-indictment. And is that when you were talking about the tough conversation? But I, the, I'm not sure that the tough conversation didn't happen until after. But the physical relationship. So I'm sure if you ask Mr. Wade, because he's a male. He would say we ended June or July because physical contact ended then. Just in my mind, being a woman, it's over when you have that like hard conversation. That's I just think women and men think differently. And I think the answer, Mr. Sadov, to your question was she's not sure whether it was before or after the indictment. Well, I'm not I'm not sure that that was her answer, but let's see if I can get specific. That is what I said. That's what I said. I'll let you. Next question, Mr. Sadov. If you need to want to say one more? The romantic relationship ended before the indictment was returned. Yes or no? To a man, yes. Well, to a man, yes. To you, no? She, she's explained this, right. Mr. Sadow. She's explained this. <laughs> and did the, and the, did the forthcoming indictment have anything to do with that? Ooh. Or was it just a coincidence? <clears throat> Mr. Let's go on and have the conversation. I'm just asking you whether or not it was a coincidence. It had absolutely or? nothing to do with this. It's interesting that we're here about this money. Mr. Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. We would have brutal arguments about the fact that I am your equal. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion. And so there was tension always in our relationship, which is why I would give him his money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? No. Sure. But I'm sure we'll talk about it further. No, we're not going to talk about it further. I, All right, no back and forth, Mr. Sit down. Next question. Uh, my next question is something that I would, that has to do with the, what I've characterized as the church speech. Let me just tell you what the question is, because I know that's not preserved something. for the record. Huh? You can preserve the question for the record, but we'll, then we'll move on. That's correct. Thank you. When you gave what I've referred to as the Martin Luther King weekend church speech, you know what I'm referring to? A great honor of mine. That's a historic African-American church. Yes, I do. Okay. Did you have handwritten notes with you that you were reading from during the speech? And, and on second thought, Mr. Sada, because you might have a number of questions about this, why don't we just bullet point what you would want to cover on this to preserve for the record, and then we'll move on to the next topic. Okay. Since I had laid out before that the forensic misconduct isn't a subject. So do I, do I not get an answer for that? That's, That's right. Okay. Uh, did you read your speech? Well, no, Mr. State, for everything related to any forensic misconduct. Oh, you just want to stay out of it now? We're just not, it's, we can do it in a bullet form if you just want to cover what you would have asked. 
but it's not in a question and answer format. Okay, so I should do that at this point or do it sure. when you're ready? We can do it right now, so it's fresh on I'm going to ask her about, did she prepare the speech? Did she have notes on the speech? Did she read the speech? Um, when did she do this? When did she write the speech? Who was she referring to when she was talking about um, others? Who was she referring to when she said they? Who she was referring to when she spoke in terms of their, that is, their, I would love to answer those questions. Well, Ms. Willis, um, you can certainly do that in some other format. But for today, that's uh, what we decided we're not going to cover. Who was she talking about that was playing the race card and why she didn't tell the people at the church that she, was, that she had had a personal slash romantic relationship with the, I'll do respect the way it was characterized, the black man that she was referring to, and was the black man she refer, referring to, was that Mr. Wade? Okay. That's that area of inquiry. Noted for the record, Mr. Stadow. Next topic. Okay. I realize that you've testified that you have no records um, that with regard to cash payments. Yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. Would your bank records reflect that you withdrew cash from your bank accounts during the time period of 2020, 2021, 2022, or 2023? I'm not asking you, I'm just asking whether they would reflect that you withdrew cash from any of your bank accounts. Uh, so the exact amounts? No, just but that yeah, of course, you did. Of course, I withdrew money throughout that time period, throughout my life. I've, I would draw money from the bank, yes, of course. Talking about cash, from that is that you go to a cash, bank right. or you go to an ATM cash. and you take cash out. Either that way or you go to Publix and you overpay or you go to another store and you overpay. So, yes, both through that, yes, uh, of course they will reflect that at times. Okay, and so those records, if we had them, would show that, correct? That throughout the course of my life, I took no, no, out money. From, I, I was very specific. I said, yes, during the course of that time period, I would have taken money out. Yes. So, do you have a problem with? Re I absolutely. With yes. You don't want the bank records to be made available I, for the court and the court alone. I'm going to object as to the relevance, and this has already been addressed earlier as it relates to other records. This is an improper line of question, questioning. He's doing it. For the purpose of harassing, or frankly, Your Honor. Uh, I'm just going to sustain it on relevance. Uh, Mr. Sadow, if that's something you want to follow up privately, uh, you can do that. Okay. Uh, last area, briefly. Yes, sir. You had contact with Mr. Wade in the tw year 2020, correct? Ooh. Um, I had some contact with Mr. Wade. Would you explain when you say some contact? Please tell us the con talk about 2020. I had some contact with Mr. Wade in 2020. Um, one of the reasons your allegations are so preposterous or Miss Merchants that you have joined is Ma'am, no, 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 I didn't no, no, ask you about the allegations. I asked you about your contact. That's all I ask you. Okay? I appreciate that, that you want to say something. But I'm interested in did you have contacts with Mr. Wade in 2020? And your answer so far has been yes, correct? Very limited contact because um, Mr. Wade had a form of cancer that makes your allegations somewhat ridiculous. I, I do appreciate the characterization. I'm not going to emasculate a black man, but I'm, I'm just telling you. I'm that. sorry, what? I'm not going to emasculate a black man. Did you understand that? All right, well, I don't think we should discuss further. Mr. Seda, next question. Trying to, Your Honor. <clears throat> Would you tell us on the occasions in 2020 that you had contact with Mr. Wade. I'm sorry, I thought I had answered that. Yes, yes, sir, there were times in 2020 I had contact, but 2020 was a year I was running for office. It was a year that he was going through some serious medical issues, and I did not have much contact, but I certainly had contact with him in 2020. Did you it go out to eat with him? Maybe, probably. Did you, did you visit him in any location, his office? Or did he visit you in your office in 2020? I am sure he, uh, I'm sure, ooh, that's a very good question. I'm sure he came to 750 
in 2020. 750 not, is? Was my office. Okay. Um, not often, but maybe once or twice. Uh, maybe I went to his office once or twice, but maybe once. And the purpose for going to his office would have been what? Maybe we would have went to Mellow Mushrooms for pizza, or uh, maybe he would have come for lunch. I'm sure we went by each other's office, though. But not often, not a lot. We, we both grinded, trying to, try, try to but, make but a living. I understand what you've said about the cancer, and I'm not going into that. But when you were going out with him to restaurants, or when he would come to your office, right? Those were not sterile environments, were they? Oh, very sterile, because it was- The restaurants were sterile environments? A lot of times we wouldn't eat there. We would pick up something and go in, but they were. Do you, you're, I'm, li I'm listening to you. You pick up and take it to where? Maybe eat at our office, but it did not happen much. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And my office in 2020, nobody was coming in. I was stir crazy, so I would still go into my office. You remember when I started this, I said, I am not even sure if we came to each other's offices, but I am trying to be. <clears throat> over cautious so I think I can recall him at 750 a couple of times um, I just think I can recall him at 750 once but let's say twice I have seen his office I remember all the awards in the lobby but I'm not sure in 2020 I, I went I'm not even sure I went in 2020 at all I just want to tell you yes because I'm not sure but I, I, have a, I have a distinct recollection of him at 750. I actually don't have a distinct recollection of me at his office in 2020. But maybe I went to his office in 2020. Maybe. Did you have ongoing phone conversations during 2020 with Mr. Wade? Oh, yeah. I talked to him. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. No question about that. No question. I talked to him on the phone in 2020. <clears throat> uh, I understood, and this is... I, maybe I was confused. The Belize trip was for his, his 50th birthday. His 50th birthday, and that was in March. He he turned 50 March 18th of 2023. If you look at the dates of the trip, I think we were there about six days. Um, we stayed at two different locations. Um, and so you paid for it. 100%. He said, not only I mean I paid for the hotel, I paid for the flights. I had a birthday luncheon for him. I paid for massages. I paid for everything. And would those payments be reflected on your credit I paid card? For the cash. You cash. paid them in cash. Cabs, cabs. I was telling you all the different things. So I'm I paid. And I'm asking you whether or not those payments would be reflected on credit card bills of yours. So there was about five hundred dollars that I think is reflected on a debit card. I, what my recollection is, I took about four in cash with me. To four hundred or four thousand. Four thousand. But I remember I handed him twenty five hundred, and then the rest was just the money we spent. I probably gave three or four hundred dollars to uh, this guy who was a taxi driver. He would drive us every day around the two or three days we went. Took him to eat like it was my it was my trip money. And you had to be clear to end this up. The 4000 that you've just told us. But I didn't give it all to him, remember. I only gave the 2500 to him. I, I didn't ask you that. I was going to ask you that. 4000 is part of your, my words, cash hoard that you had collected over time. Cash what? Hoard, H-O-R-D-E. Well, I thought you said something different, sir. No, I'm afraid I wouldn't say that. Uh -huh. Under any circumstances to you or in All right, back on track. So hoard, cash hoard debt. I, I would not classify it at, in that way, but I have money at my house. Yes, sir. Yeah. And the money, when you had money at your house. My, when I, and look, I'm speaking too loosely. I had money wherever I was staying. So I was not referring to my house in 750. I'm saying I had money wherever I was laying my head. Yes, sir. I, that was my fault that I wasn't clear. Okay, so when you were at what we said the year de condo during the time period we've always discussed, that's where you would keep your cash. When I stay there, yes. yes. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. All right, I want to see if we can get through a few more defense counsel possible before breaking for today. Mr. Stockton. 